everyone. Good morning. Uh, we are a little off this morning because um, our video person has to quarantine, I discovered last night. Mm. And, um, well, just we've had several people who usually help us on Sunday morning that are quarantining. So uh, we were trying to get the video up and running, and we've got Scott holding it by his hand because our <laughs> video person is not able to be here either. Uh, there, our backup for that is quarantining as well, as well as one of our nursery workers. So we're doing the best that we can. I'm really trying to get this online, and uh, but if we need to quarantine, we should do it. We should do it. Mm -hmm. It's good to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Good to see everyone. We we're going to have a theology in the pub on. On Wednesday, but that is canceled because the Four Daughters uh, restaurant is not holding in person uh, patrons. It's all curbside. So that wouldn't work for us. And to sit around the table in discussion probably wouldn't be the best idea anyway. So there we are. We do have our board meeting, and um, we will spread out. This is an important board meeting. Uh, and that's on Tuesday. But if you would like to be online, and rather than, than attend, we'll do that as well. If you go online, though, I just can't promise that you'll be able to participate and see everything, because I have discovered over the year that when you do in-person and Zoom, the people on Zoom, you're going to miss pieces. I really don't have a way around that. Uh, just because, you know, we have to spread out. Um, but I do want to hold a board meeting in, in the house because there are, um, and spread out because there are some issues on the building I would like the board present for. Um, I want to thank everyone for our backpacks. We collected 17 backpacks. Mm -hmm. we give ourselves a round of applause. Um, and I really, I really want to thank, um, uh, 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 um, Kathy, uh, and, uh, Linda, <coughs> Great, uh, 17 backpacks, and we brought them where to? By Mark. By Mark, and they'll get them to students that are in need. All right, all right. I don't have my robe on because I found them the last minute. We just don't have people who are usually helping them. Kind of was trying to pinch it, <laughs> but that's okay. That's the time we live in right now. Right. So we don't have our video. So I'm going to have you open your hymnal. Find a hymnal, and uh, we'll be following the order of service there for our greeting. Charlene is the one that was going to be doing the video, and, and um, she called me last night. And turn to page, hold on here, turn to page um, six. See where it says the greeting? We'll, we'll, we'll begin there. So please stand. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. And let's pray this prayer together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And because um, we are, are not singing, you all want to, I kind of just jumped the gun here. You want to, yeah, I know you were first pray, but you want to play that? Thank you. I lived in Australia for eight years and um, I taught some guitar students there. One of them was named 
his name is Stu, and he came to a lesson one day and was doing something really cool to me on guitar, so I was inspired by that, and I wrote a song called Stu's Blues. <laughs> singing. Are you all familiar with that hymn? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to play that now. The pandemic has kept us from singing, sorry to say. <laughs> we can enjoy it. Storm can shake my 
take a moment to pray, but first we'll hear what's on your hearts. We're a small group, so you can share this morning. <laughs> My uh, children's grandmother, their mother's uh, mom, died this past week, and they were tight. They were tight. She lived a good long life, though, well into her 90s, but uh, I do uh, feel for my kids, uh, but they, they spent many of their parts of their summers in Connecticut on a farm and a farmhouse that was over 200 years old. Uh, so, ordering a, a wildlife preserve, so it was pretty uh, idyllic. Yeah. This is going, I, I have a, a friend that's next door to me in the apartment, and he's a World War II veteran. Okay. And he's, uh, he's getting near the end of his life. He's very, very bedridden and uh, He's kind of losing his train of thought. What, what is his name? His name is Bob. Bob. All right. Are there others? Ben. Yes. Our retired missionary, Paul Jeffrey. I cannot remember the name of where he's going, but he's been called out in retirement to go to another country to help out. Okay. Probably. I think it's South Sudan. I saw that. Yeah. Too. Is it Thank being you. called by UMCOR? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes? Yeah, I spoke with them last night. I've, I've called them several times this week. And Charlotte is actually doing pretty well. Yeah. She's doing pretty well. And uh, But they, they need to quarantine. Yeah, we need to keep Charlene in our prayers. She needs to quarantine as well. We have quite a few people in the church right now that are quarantining. And that's a good thing. Our nursery worker is quarantining too, so um, one of them. Yes. Yeah, Penny? Uh, John and Barbara. Uh, like her, yeah, they're, she's, <laughs> um, they're doing very well compared to what he's like. Yes. He still has his legs to work on, but his arms are moving now, and he's able to speak. And uh, that that's a good day. After six months yeah. of this, and this then, is good. Then I've got my my granddaughter Abigail. Abigail. Yeah. All right. Yes. You were <laughs> you were stretching. <laughs> Dangerous thing to do with this part of the <laughs> <laughs> And we want to thank Scott for videoing us when I found out our backup was not even to come. <laughs> and he's doing it freehand. He's holding his arm there for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I just like we, it this way. Yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, Last minute. Yeah. Any others? Let us pray. Good Lord, in your great power, renew, refresh, and restore us, that we may live and work to your praise and to glory, through Christ our Lord, who is alive and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Lord, be a light to our path and a strength for our journey. Shape us, restore us in your likeness that we would be your loving witness. May we hear and heed your call. That we would walk as children of the light and not be taken up with trivial slights and misgivings, but always to move forward for your goodness. Give us a spiritual diet that brings comfort when we are lonely. Give us a spiritual diet fortify us when we're feeling weak. We need your spiritual nutrition that gives us strength. 
that gives us strength to overcome temptation. We need spiritual nutrition that gives us strength not to strike when we have been offended. We need spiritual strength to build up rather than tear down. Give us wisdom and compassion and insight. Those who struggle from day to day to provide for their families and themselves. Shine your light into our dark places that there would be hope. We pray for those everywhere who have suffered from fires and flooding and hurricanes. Remember those who have lost their homes, loved ones, and a sense of security. Be with our soldiers who find themselves in Afghanistan, and all those Afghanistans who are fleeing for their life and safety. Lord, with you is the source of life. In this time of pandemic, in those days when smoke from the fires fill the air, give us patience with one another and with ourselves. When it's most needed, help us to be charitable in our attitude and outlook. Help us to find our center. When life is disruptive, our peace, when we are filled with anxiety and unease. We continue to ask for guidance and strength for healthcare professionals, for doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists, for patients find themselves in ICU and unable to breathe. We pray for public health leaders as they make difficult decisions for our community. And for teachers and school administrators as they prepare their classroom in a difficult time. And give us wisdom with one another. Help us to build trust and the science and the minds that you have given us. We pray for firefighters. Keep them safe and give them the strength, the endurance they need. And for those within our circle of care, for our neighbors who suffer from illness or in the end of life, for young mothers who are bringing fathers that are bringing children into the world, and for all who are quarantining and may find themselves lonesome. For any whose names we know that suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And for those who care for them, Teach us, the Church, to be a source of comfort and strength. And we pray the prayer that you taught us, praying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we're not having a traditional passing of the peace, but we can all wave and say howdy. Hello. And also you. And also with you. That's right. <laughs> And uh, since, can you just play a few bars for gathering music and we'll uh, just take a moment of silence. And then um, I'll announce the offering and then you can play the special music once I've done that. All right.
<laughs> but it's pray as you go. If you know how to load, download an app, that's what you type in, pray as you go. And it's um, uh, developed by a group of Jesuit priests in South Africa, of all places. The music is beautiful. The scripture reading is well done. They take a moment to just to provoke and ask questions after the reading to help you think. And once again, the music is it's beautiful. So, if you need something to help you along the way, pray as you go. The board meeting, I'm going to bring this up again. You know, in the United Methodist Church, there's only two meetings that are closed to the congregation. And only at certain, well, nominations when we nominate people, and that's the committee that I chair. In staff parish, when you're talking about personnel, the board meeting is open to all, everyone. And in this time, when we're going through, you know, some turmoil with society and around us, um, it might be good to know what's going on with your church to attend the board meeting at 6.30 or Tuesday evening. I really feel called to bring the church to a time of um, introspect, introspect, introspection, to really look at who we are, what our calling is at this time in the church's history. Something I've really been working on, but it'll be a six-month process, and I'm going to present that at the board, um, that idea. I'm not sure we'll be able to get it begin it in September because of the pandemic, but we'll see how things go. But it's a time when um, I really want to call the congregation to look to one another to the spirit, to find out who we are. That's not something I'm going to tell you who you are. You know <laughs> who you are. I want to hear from you. All right. And that's what we'll be doing for that six month period. So, we come to time for our tithes and offerings. Judy and Bruce, thank you. Uh, two of our, <laughs> so many people quarantining. Two of our other ushers are quarantining. So, I'll tell you, I got a lot of messages when I got back from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are, here we are. <laughs> thank you, thank you for playing. Thank you. 
Penny, are you up to reading? Especially with this group. 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 Especially with this Page. I mean, that was a prayer. You don't need to worry about oh. it because you've got another book in your hand. All right. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. When I picked the scriptures out, I really tried to find a gospel lesson since that's the center of our faith that goes along with our secondary reading, which is from Corinthians. See if you can find that connection. And the first one is from Matthew. It's part of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 21 to 20, no, 24. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times. What? I'm giving you a mic. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? Um, okay. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, You fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are you sure I know what you You go ahead and read it. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. I'll stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're hoping for hyperbole right there. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't really mean it. First Corinthians. <laughs> Three, one through nine. Three. Yeah. And so brothers and sisters could not speak. I could not speak to you as spiritual people but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now, you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. Amen. Thank you, Penny. Amen. I fed you with milk, not solid food. You were not ready for solid food. Even now, you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. When I was in uh, North Carolina in June uh, visiting family, I was sitting uh, with my grandson, 
who mm, at the time was 10 months old. Um, and um, his mother brought him food. His mother brought him solid food. And the child could hardly contain himself. I mean, this is a new experience. And he was so overcome with happiness that he was getting to eat. I mean, it, you know how, like, happiness can just take over a baby, their entire being? Well, that's how it was. He dug his hands into that avocado and butternut squash like it was a gold mine. It was a gift <laughs> from heaven. He just, he just hooted. It was amazing. And when he finished, um, his face was avocado green with tinges of orange. It was just, he, I think he may have worn 60% of that food. But then he just took it off his face and ate it. I mean, it was just, it was a wonderful experience for him. And I'm sure that uh, many of you who have had children or grandchildren know this experience. And it's a big step in a baby's important almost a toddler's development, isn't it? When they can begin to eat food that everybody else is eating at the table. And what do we say? You know, they're little, but we say, what a big boy, you just eat food. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, as important as that mother's milk is, very important, at some point, for that nutrition and calories, they gotta eat the solid stuff. I have been with milk, not solid food, now, I think it's quite an interesting, this is just an offshoot, that, you know, rough and tumble masculine um, St. Paul is comparing himself to a mother nursing a baby, so I thought that was good for Paul. I fed you with milk, not solid food. You are not ready for solid food. Even now, you're still not ready. You're still of the flesh. Um, Paul is speaking here of Christian maturity. Um, and I want to spend just a few moments and talk about what Christian maturity looks like in our world, what that looks like, and um, talk about what's required of us now. Now, to clarify, when St. Paul says the word flesh, he's not, most often not, especially in this context, referring to lust and sexual sin. We, we have that understanding in the English language that when you say flesh, that's what you're speaking of, and that's not what he's speaking of here. In our culture, that's just the impression we have. In the ancient world, um, passion was not a positive attribute, and that's what he's talking about, the passions. They would never have said in the ancient world that somebody has a passion for a hobby, like painting or, or rock climbing. They, they wouldn't have said, oh, so-and-so has a passion for life, or she has a passion for serving the poor. That wasn't their way of, of thought. Rather, passions were things that carried us away from God and from one another. Like indifference to the well-being of another person or a judgmental attitude, those were considered passions. Greed was a passion, so it was gluttony, envy, pride. In this context of the flesh is referring to the arguing, the arguing, the passionate arguing, and the division that's taken place in the Corinth congregation. So that's, a, that's what the flesh was. It was those disruptive passions that took us away from God. I fed you with milk, not solid food. Even now, you're not ready. You're still in the flesh. You're still you know, caught up in these passions. St. Paul is needling the congregation. He's unhappy with them. Apparently, um, and we'll find, you'll find out later in the letter, there are those who think of themselves as exceptional Christians, and yet their behavior isn't exceptional. You know, they're not living a Christ-like life because they're just, well, they're getting into it with each other for unnecessary stuff. As people within the Methodist tradition, we would call this growing in grace. Well, that's what Paul's talking about, growing in grace, or we're not moving on to perfection. That's another Wesleyan phrase. So it's the same kind of idea. Um, it's it's um, what they're involved in is alienating themselves from the image of God. But then I suppose, don't you think, don't you think it's easier to hold a particular set of beliefs than it is to be transformed inwardly by those beliefs? 
we can hold um, what we think of as right doctrine, but that right doctrine doesn't help us put aside our grudges and prejudices, resentments, our destructive habits. So they're caught up in having the right doctrine, the right beliefs, but they're not caught up in creating an inward change. If we read further into Paul's letter, we discover that the, the Corinthian church had a charismatic contingent. People spoke in tongues. Has anybody here ever seen, I've seen people speak in tongues, they spoke in tongues. You know, it's an ancient language, ancient even for those in the ancient times, that people spoke in worship. And it was an impressive show. These folks were thought to have a special connection with God because of this babble that they would all of a sudden perform. They were thought to be set aside, very holy. They have this privileged gift. And yet, Paul is saying, but is it making you kinder? And then there were some who were aligning themselves with who they thought was the better pastor. Of course, it was Paul, who was a rough and tumble, passionate, well, I'm using the word wrongly here, I don't know what else to use, but he, he really believed in what he said, and brought so many Gentiles into the Christian faith, which was a new thing, and, and, and then there was um, Apollos, who was from Alexandria, who was very different, I mean, he was, you know, think of the Methodist way, when you get one preacher, then the next, and it's, you know, you've got to shake your head, they're so different, that's how it was with them. You know, whereas, you know, St. Paul with nothing to look at, well, Apollos, he was, he was handsome, he was debonair, he was cultured and educated, young people liked him. And then they have their current pastor, Cephas, who's very cautious, very much about tradition. You had your different flavors. The trouble is with congregation, their devotion to these gifts, tongues or to the different preachers, it hasn't changed them. Not outwardly. It doesn't seem to have done them much good. They're arguing with themselves, among themselves. Their faith hasn't made them kinder. The congregation is, um, it, it's like, it's filled with this pettiness. You've seen it happen, not just in churches, but in, but in families or maybe in the work office. We discover in, in later chapters, too, that the wealthy are not necessarily understanding the poor among them. It's an unusual congregation, and they have their challenges, because you have free people and slaves, some of them their slaves, worshiping together. But these set of challenges aren't making them more mature. And this is why Paul is telling them he's only fed them with milk. They're not maturing. They're like my grandson. They're still, you know, putting their hands in the butternut squash and getting it all over their face. They haven't learned to eat with a spoon, right, and a napkin. They're, they're not on that solid food. They need that nutrition for real life, for real life, real life happenings. And isn't that the purpose of our practicing our faith? I mean, the purpose of our practicing our faith isn't foremost to believe the right thing, but it's to be like Jesus, right? And our faith isn't necessarily to confirm what we believe, I mean, and, and, and to confirm how we live and relate with one another, but to transform us, right? Does our devotion to Christ and the church make us better people? Sometimes we don't need to be affirmed. Sometimes we need to be challenged. We need to be challenged. What good are our beliefs, even if they are true, and we hold them sincerely, if they make us all hot and bothered around the collar, if they make us argumentative? You've heard those arguments. You've been a part of those arguments. What, what good are those correct beliefs if they make us defensive? What good are our correct alliances if um, they cause conflict? Mm. And we're not able to listen to the other with a different point of view. Yeah, I mean, especially in these days, 
we, we come to the church to be comforted. Sometimes I just come sit in the sanctuary to be comforted, and there's nobody here. We, we come to the church to find stability when we don't feel we have much. Or assurance. I think of that old hymn, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We, we want divine assurance in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. After all, I'm called a pastor by many, and that says as much, right? The word pastor, assurance, comfort. But that is only part of the reason we're here. We're not always here to be validated. We're here to grow spiritually. And sometimes that, there's some dying inside when we have to grow spiritually. We have to, we have to die to some things. We have to open up a hard heart and make it soft. And that, that's uncomfortable. And that's what Paul means when he says you got to start eating some solid food requires effort, which means that sometimes it's better to be afflicted. In another letter, Paul writes, we're not all that we once were, but yet not all that we can be. So he's talking of a journey, not all with what we were, and not all, but yet not all that we can be. We want to grow. Stasis is not what we're after. In a previous congregation, um, there were two older fellows, both retired, that were best friends, and they didn't agree on much of anything. Um, one was a retired pediatrician. Well, he actually still worked part-time, and he used to tell me that he was the oldest practicing pediatrician in North Carolina. I don't know if that was true, but it could have been. He was, I think he was 86 or 87. And he was a very influential individual in that city. He, he was very progressive politically. Um, and he was a friend of the retired, good friend of the retired city manager, who was also very well known in that city. And so much different. So much different. He was a southern gentleman through and through, and he was conservative through and through. Uh, the pediatrician's name was David. Um, the city manager's name was Roger. And David would say of Roger, you know, the thing about Roger is I don't like a lot of stuff about him. I don't like his haircut. <laughs> and he was kind of like going bald but didn't want to show it, if you know what I mean. He said, I don't even like what he drives. I mean, David, who was pretty well off, drove this old uh, Chevy truck. And Roger drove a really, like, what I call a chrome boat, a yank tank. It was a big Cadillac. And then David would say, and I certainly don't like any of his politics. <laughs> and this was at a time when we had our former president that was really causing, you know, uh, some disruption there. But then he says, he says to me, he says, but you know what Roger does? Every morning he calls me up and says, well, David, what can I help you with today? And they would get together and they would have a good time and they would either be, oh, it could be anything, bringing cans of food to the food bank in the county or cleaning out the church basement or, oh, I don't know, just giving me a hard time because they wanted to do something I didn't want them to do. <laughs> <laughs> and they were good friends. They were good friends. But more importantly than being good friends is they were kind to each other. They didn't agree on most of the flashpoint issues of the day, such as same-sex marriage or the inclusion of LGBTQ people, which I was kind of got embroiled in, or their devotion or disdain for the presidency. But they loved one another. They loved one another. They were kind to each other and kind to the community. And as leaders of that city, 
they help so many in a region where hundreds and hundreds of people have lost their manufacturing jobs because it all had left offshore for cheaper labor. I think, and it's a struggle because with Roger, I really, I really disagreed with him on stuff. But I do think that's some of what Paul's talking about. They had learned to eat solid food. They, 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 they had taken their faith seriously. And I don't know, I'm still praying that David could bring Roger around on a few things, but let's uh, <laughs> see. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? Behaving according to human inclinations. They, those two men rose above that. They really rose above that. We're um, living in a time when the church is both struggling and yet the world really needs the church's witness. The world needs, well, our nation needs congregations that are eating solid food. Getting the nutrition we need to be more like Christ. And in, you know, in a society that is at odds with each other. Have you noticed, maybe this is just in my head, but I think it's true, that people seem to have a short fuse lately. Does somebody say, oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. Got, some, got some amens there, didn't I? <laughs> And, and let's be honest, there's good reason for some of this. I mean, I, I woke up a few mornings this month, and a term that I didn't know until I came west, air quality index, was over 250, with a note on my iPhone that it was hazardous for everybody, not just the unhealthy. The fires in our area at that time were only 30% contained, and I'll have to say when I went to the coast, I kind of ignored it for a little bit, so I don't know how contained they are now. And people were just feeling smothered. There seemed to be no end in sight. It's, it's anxiety producing. It's anxiety producing. And, you know, and it doesn't help that, you know, scientists from around the world, through the United Nations, came out with a report on red alert to the future of our climate. And then, of course, look where we are now. I got back from vacation and <laughs> lost my sound guy, thanks, Kath. Lost my video person, lost two of my ushers, <laughs> lost the nursery worker. <laughs> Scott showed up and is doing the video by hand. <laughs> and I told them all, well, you need to stay home. You need to quarantine. Yeah. And then there's all the cultural wars. Over things by, oh Lord have mercy, I wish they weren't cultural wars over medicine and public health. And the world needs an elixir, right? A divine elixir. And we have St. Paul's words. You know, it's our natural inclination, he writes, under these circumstances to be of the flesh. But then he says, but you can't be. He really lays it on. It's our natural inclination to be short with one another. Oh, to lose our tempers and to bicker and argue with one another as a distraction from the real problems that we face. We need, even while we struggle, congregations, people of faith are eating some solid food. Oh, we need kindness in the world. We need wisdom. We need people who can look for the long view. We need grace. We just need to extend people. You know what it means when I say we need to extend people grace? Mm -hmm. Like, give them the benefit of the doubt. Give them space. We need compassion. We need to know when to hold our tongues because saying something is only at that moment going to make matters worse. And we need to know when to speak 
Because not saying anything is an abdication of our Christian witness. And that's a hard line to find sometimes. I was in the dog park in Talon, just a few blocks from my home, a few weeks ago, before I went up to the coast for that six days. When a, a dog owner, a fellow, became irate over the behavior of uh, another dog, which kind of odd, as I watched it, was spurred on by the aggressiveness of his own dog. And perhaps that dog's aggression was a reflection of the owner had been aggressive. Who's to say? I left. And as I walked home, I thought about it. And I wonder if that neighbor's Aggression of the dog was really about the dog. Or it is about his life. Or the smoky air he breathes. Did, did, he, did he lose his house in town to the fires? And is he living in a small FEMA trailer? They're all over that town. Does he not have air conditioning? Is it his work? Is it the heat? Our natural human inclination, as what Paul calls the flesh, would have been to fight back with that man, bark like his dog. Or it could have found, been found a way to bring calm, to absorb his anger in some way, and to return his fierceness with words, you know, I, I, I hope you have a good I hope you're okay. To somehow lower the emotional temperature in that dog park on that Monday night. But to do that is difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. It is difficult. But, you know, that's the faith. It's faith is difficult. But we're not always meant to comfort when we come here. But to be transformed. It takes time, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Some days it's like a three steps forward, four steps back. <laughs> <laughs> but we have one another. We have the Gospels. We have the Spirit of God, who loves us and reigns over us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> ben, you have the Zoom uh, address for people who want to go to the meeting. Yeah, if people will just email me that that. I'll, I have to. I have to make that connection. Okay. They, I have to log them in. We have it set up so that um, people can't just show up at our Zoom meetings, and I really don't want that to happen for them. Yeah. Kind of, you know, I don't just want. We do have people who just are dive bombing church Zoom meetings. So, yeah, you just need to email me or call me, and I'll, I'll get you in there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll have a little bit of music. Um, one of my favorite hymns, "Love Divine, All Love Takes Only," but I'm sorry we can't sing it. We're going to stay inside. It's kind of smoky out. Yeah, yeah. You can haul on your mouth. <laughs>
peace of Jesus the Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us say amen. Amen. amen.